G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in previous videos I've shown you how I cast brass round stock using a cast iron old slave cylinder off of a four-wheel drive as the, the mould. And being cast iron, you can see how it goes sort of oxidised inside. The brass doesn't ad adhere to it. And brass being very similar coefficient of expansion as aluminium and much greater than cast iron or steel it shrinks away from the the mould once it cools down so yeah it worked well and uh, certainly plenty good enough for model making and you know home workshop use I'm pretty pleased with it it turned out well now okay that's all well and good but I've had a number of people sort of in the past say well they tried to use a steel mould and it didn't work the brass adhered to the steel now brass doesn't adhere to cast iron well I have found it not to happen because of that sort of oxide coating it gets and uh, so now it's time I suppose to move on to a steel mould and see what will happen you know will it be suitable to do this. Uh, the reason I want to go steel is I want a longer mould because this is only capable of doing this sort of length and longer would be better even though this is probably the, all you really need for model engine making most of the time anyway I would think. So I've knocked up a, a steel mould and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay well here's the base of it this is just a bit of junk and uh, yeah, it didn't weld too well. I uh, burnt through on that, but that's okay. I wasn't going for any fine finish. I just wanted to stick on there. If this process works, well, then I'll do something better. And then, so that's the base, the plug. And then this is the, the bit that goes on. So that's going to be our casting medium, our mould. And we'll pour down into that. Now, this was an old steering shaft tube out of an old Holden from the 70s. It's good and round, it's uniform, there's no seam, so that should do the job. No rust inside either, pretty good. So I've done it this way so that I can uh, take it off the plug and then, then punch it out if needs be, and I probably will have to punch it out. But will it punch out? And you can see how much longer it is than the existing mould it's half as long again almost so yeah the next thing now is to heat up the uh, the brass drop it in and see how we go this is what I've been melting down this is some leftover brass from the previous uh, experiments and you can see I've even got a, an old brass fitting some brass cartridge cases the brass um, cuttings from when I skimmed down the, the original castings, I saved all that. It's quite a lot of weight in there, so you can re-melt all that. And not, it's unlike aluminium where you get a lot of oxide from cuttings and it's not really worthwhile melting down aluminium turnings or chips, not unless you've got heaps and heaps of it, because it just makes a huge amount of dross but with the brass that doesn't happen so and the same with the fitting I'd put that in it's chrome plated but that just magically disappears when you melt it down I presume it goes into the dross or maybe it's down the bottom of the container I can't tell there's a fair bit of weight in that so that'll be, that'll be more than enough to do what I want to do today so yeah let's get on with it
Well, I didn't quite fill it. It's uh, not all molten completely, so we'll just have to see how this goes anyway. It'll be a good test to see if it does stick to the steel or whether it will come out. So we'll let it cool down now. Okay, so here it is in the bucket of sand. Will she come off? Yeah, it came off alright. And you can see how far down we've gone with it's about four fifths full. So now will it come out? This is the whole thing. Will it come out? I'm not very hopeful about this. And I've used fairly thin walled tubing so that if it doesn't come out, I'll just machine the steel away. There's not much to machine off really. So that's the plan. We'll, we'll cool it down and then we'll try and knock it out. Okay, I've let it air cool. And I've got to say I'm not very hopeful of this whole process. I, if this comes out I'll be pretty bloody surprised. So we'll knock it out from the, the bottom. I haven't got much to rest on either. But anyway, we've got quite a bit of clearance back so we'll see how it goes. Excuse the lawnmower is going in the background, it's Saturday morning. Oh, it's coming out easy. Oh, wow. Wow, I wouldn't have thought that. Look at that. Wow, look at that. That's friggin' amazing. That is friggin' amazing. I expected the worst, and I've got the best. That worked fantastic. Have a look at that. Now that's smaller diameter than I'd cast previously because I wanted to get some smaller diameter stuff. So yeah, as long as you've got a good round uniform cylinder, still works fine. That came out dead easy. <laughs> that's fucking brilliant. Okay, well now it's a matter of spin it up and see how it goes. Okay, so now we'll just cut the baggy bit off. Let's see how she goes. Looking good. Okay, let's give this a go. We'll just use the aluminium in cutting insert from last time. It's not the right insert for brass, but it will give it a, a good enough finish that we can see what's going on. And uh, yeah, this came out nice and true, really good. I've got a little bit of out of the takeoff, and yeah, should be interesting. I'll do it on medium feed. <sighs> Some imperfections. That was only third skim, so we've got a way to bit of way to go, but it's it's looking reasonable. We'll press on and do some more. Go back to coarse feed and get off a bit quicker.
Okay. Well, I've had imperfections quite a bit of the way. I've got it down to a level where they're not bad, but there's a tiny one there, tiny one there, there. You can see how much I've machined away, quite a bit. So that's the problem. Imperfections. And that was pretty daggy old brass that was the bottom of the crucible. And I'm not sure if it was really as hot as it should have been. But that's what you get. I mean, the main thing was it released from the steel mould, which was the big, the big, big question. And it's, you know, it's usable, but it's not perfect for sure. Um, yeah. One thing I will point out, though, these plates, putting a plate on like this on your lathe is the best thing you can do. Look how little mess there is on the on the bed. I mean, there's basically nothing. Look at that. That little tray catches all of it. And also you can scrape off the brass and remelt the bits you've got left over. It's not like aluminium where you get a lot of oxide. So yeah, these plates are worth their weight in gold. They're super, super good idea. And you can go right up under the chuck, no problem. It's not going to foul. Get as close to the to the actual ways as you can. That's as low as I can easily get it. And yet it will still go over the, the carriage stop. So yeah, there's a good, good tip for you. As for that, well, I might stop there because down the track I'm going to have to machine this so I'll just use that as it is and uh, it's good enough to do some things but it's not perfect for sure but oh well we've answered the question will it release yes it definitely will release no problem whatsoever if you've got a perfectly cylindrical mould with no seam or if you're casting into, say, some um, even square section, you know, or some channel to make stuff for the mill, it should release no problem at all. OK, well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. It was an interesting exercise. I'll see you next time. Cheers.